we are living in a moment when the crucial issues of race and racism in the United States have once more gripped the national consciousness. As unarmed African Americans are gunned down by police and white vigilantes, are, uh, and with, by police and white vigilantes, with few, if any, consequences, the need for a serious reckoning is absolutely urgent. Black lives do matter, and while the insistence of that message is perhaps being heard, the question remains: What is being done about it? How much of our current state of affairs is rooted in history and even an erasure of history? Well, joining me to discuss those questions is my guest, Randall Robinson. He's a professor of law at Pennsylvania State School and Law School and is the creator, co-producer, and host of the public television human rights series, World on Trial. He's also the founder of Trans Africa. He's written multiple national best-selling books, including The Debt, What America Owes to Blacks, The Reckoning, What Blacks Owe to Each Other, Quitting America, The Departure of a Black Man from His Native Land, and An Unbroken Agony, Haiti, From Revolution to the Kidnapping of a President. His latest book is a historical novel called Makeda, about a young black man coming of age during the civil rights movement and the spiritual connection he has to his grandmother. Professor Robinson lives in St. Kitts, West Indies, but he is currently visiting Los Angeles where this program is recorded, and I'm so pleased and honored to host him in studio for the hour. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm Thank honored you. to be here. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, it's uh, very sad that my first question to you today is to reflect on this horrific massacre at this church in South Carolina. Um, I was grief-stricken this morning to read this news of what can only be described as an act of terrorism, and yet the furthest that media are going is calling it a hate crime, which obviously it is as well. But what are your thoughts? Um, you know, the, the dead haven't even been buried yet, so I know it's very, very soon. But what are your thoughts on what has just oh, happened? I'm, I'm, when I read the story in the New York Times this morning, I was uh, almost speechless. I, I didn't know how to, um, to respond, how to put my arms around what had, uh, what had happened. And I, re I recalled um, a discussion I had had uh, just a few years ago after President Obama was elected uh, from, uh, from a publisher uh, that, uh, that w we needn't talk about some of the things that uh, I had been writing about because we were on a post-racial right. period. Uh, which was um, on its face a, a silly claim, but one, one had hoped and prayed that we had gotten beyond uh, tragedies like that uh, that occurred in that church, the, the church um, uh, founded uh, with others by Denmark Vesey, who was executed uh, for the slave revolt that he helped uh, to, uh, to stage. And now to see this happen in 2015 is uh, is is simply is simply shocking, and um, we're all grief stricken. But in the last analysis, the question is, what do we we do about it? How do we respond to it? And we have formed, uh, I think, as a society, a terrible habit of uh, uh, creating. Um, wreckage of, uh, of a people hmm. doing systemic um, a damage over, uh, like the damage of slavery, um, over 246 years and simply walking away from the, uh, the crime against humanity. Uh, w as if people uh, who have been um, uh, eviscerated uh, could get up healthily and walk on uh, competitively into uh, into a new time. That doesn't happen when you damage people like that. And 